You guys, I have Miss Gabrielle Judge on the podcast today. And Gabrielle, you are a freaking sensation girl. You have just this incredible story. You've taken TikTok by storm. And I'm so excited just to get into basically the whole catalyst of anti work girl boss. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to chat today. Um, things have like picked up this year, so it's been wild. So it's been super fun to be able to just come on things like this and be able to talk more about it. So I appreciate having this space for me. Absolutely. So let's start at the beginning. You obviously come from the tech world. You obviously had this kind of big girl job and you noticed that some things just weren't like really fulfilling in that sense, like kind of take us back to the beginning and walk us through how this whole thing started. Yeah, so I was a first generation college student. I felt like college was like the route for me. I didn't really know anything else that I could do. So I got a technical degree um, and I finished in 2019. So I had like this big girl job lined up. I thought I was like crossing all of the, the checklists, you know, like I'm an adult here, 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 adulting, still adulting, like cool. Um, I was in like this awesome job. Like I got to use my brain. I got to use my degree. It was super fun. It was super cool. Um, what happened over time is it was a consulting job. So like consulting means like 9,000 things. And so it was a lot of like trying to negotiate things of like, Hey, I'm still working like 60, 70 hours a week. I'm getting pay cuts because of the, the economy. I'm getting no raises right now. Like just things like that. Right. So it's like, I always encourage my community to think of themselves as a, as a business, even if they're not a business owner, because I think that's the only way that you'll really thrive in corporate America is you understand like the R like the actual return on investment with your actual time. Um, so, you know, we like to play these games sometimes of like, Oh, take on this new project. It's a learning opportunity. Where could you learn even a higher value skill on your own after you practice work life balance and you're able to walk away and do something else. Right. Like mm -hmm. we can get on into all that. So I was like starting to feel these things. Like that's where I guess this whole like anti-work girl boss thing started to like be born. I was always kind of like, working so many jobs at the same time. Like I, I just didn't have one. I didn't really have a choice. Like I just kind of had to through college and high school and stuff like that. But two, then it was like, I got to understand like tasting so many different things and having more of what we call like a career portfolio versus like a path or like a ladder. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's where I really started to do that. And like my teens and stuff. So like all this stuff was brewing. Then there was like this epitome that happened where I got a concussion, like God, creator of the universe, whoever the heck it is, was like, stop using your brain, get out of your brain. You're not mm. using it anymore. You're on, you're, you're like completely not happy right now. Like you're, you're going through the movements. Like you say you're doing this, but like, what do you want to do? Like what's Gab? And so I was like sitting in the darkness of my room for like two months, like trying to heal and like figure it out and stuff. And it was like, I want to make content. Like, I don't know what that looks like yet, but like, I want to be some type of like thought leader. There's things that I want to like show people. I think I have a, like a concept of like how to understand the working class in, in a capitalistic society. Like I have some tidbits. I have some like ideas. Like I think that we could see, see some improvements here, especially with like the pandemic that was going on at that time, especially um, just with all the crazy stuff that's been happening. Remote work being a thing. I'm like, we could really like, capitalize on this right now it's like workers like I see some type of freedom for us happiness like evolution of like what work really means mm -hmm. um and so that's like where that really started to become born and so I think I started to make TikToks like two years ago and it's been a wild ride TikTok moves very fast um so I am now uh the the founder of anti-work girl boss and so over there we really just teach a lot of the stuff that I was talking about earlier and all these things that were kind of born from this crazy concussion so, which is so like kind of synchronistic how all this lined up, right? I mean, the concussion to you kind of being like, yeah. I think I want to go to create content, but you actually tapped into something so much deeper than just creating content, right? Like the fact that you kind of debunk tech and money and the future of the workforce and, you know, talking to kind of Gen Z and everything that they're, everything that's kind of going on within their own like ideation of what their career is going to look like. What started that pathway because obviously you came from the tech space you saw kind of corporate america i feel like you were able to very quickly pick up on like kind of different toxic behaviors that people were kind of like they were in within their own like their own job what was the catalyst of like wait i'm gonna go down this road instead of all the other different content creation roads that you could have gone down fashion beauty you know like what made you kind of say no this is this is it 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to be a beauty influencer. They get paid really well, but unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. My sister is, and I like watch her brand deal sometimes. I'm like, it's ridiculous, um, but it's super cool, and it's she's worth it. Um, but yeah, it's like I'm trying to think back. So. I was always, I thought that I was interested in the technical side of tech companies. And so I got my technical degree. It was super cool for like my logic -y brain. I'm a projector in human design. So it was like cool to like be able to like ingest into things and like sit in it and like become an expert in things. And then I was like, no, I actually like just the innovation of tech companies. I like the like relationship of tech companies to um, the economy as a whole. I was raised I was born basically in the dot-com boom. I was born in 97. So like I've seen like this evolution of it. And I was like, this is wildly fascinating. And then we saw all this like 0% on like all this venture capital that happened. And like everyone and their mother had a tech company, even though it was like a delivery mattress company, you know, like whatever. So like I saw all of this and I was like, this is so insane. So I got two jobs, two separate jobs in like the tech space. The first one gave me a no for more pay if I asked me to do more work. And then the second one did it. And so I was like, I'm not repeating this ever again. Mm -hmm. um, I finally had like the second time that I got the note at the second job, I finally had like a following at TikTok. Like I had like a business and stuff like that. I had all this stuff on the side. So I was like, you know what? Like instead of trying to fit a square in a circle or whatever the heck the, the saying is in my day to day, like I find myself like I ought to talk about this like on my platform like I just feel like that's what I was here for like I ought like I have to share this stuff like if I don't this is selfish or this is like me not living like my full embodied self if that makes sense mm -hmm. so I was like I like I have to like I think that this is every sign like clearly I want to be an entrepreneur because what I ask for is like lots of learning opportunities when I create more input in the company I want to get paid for that and I was like that's kind of like running a company so like why don't you just go do that um, and so I saw all this and so I really complicated or I guess like overcomplicated the like transition. Like I thought like one person one day was going to be like anointing me like you are ready to leave your nine to five. Like no one's going to do that because the nine to five needs us to stay in it. Like no one's going to be like, oh, you should leave, you know? So I, I just, I think I overcomplicated it for a little bit longer than I should have, but like trusting the process, like I'm here now. So I just, I made the jump. I was like, you know what? Like I have a, pr a proof of concept that like this is a business, this can do something. I'm seeing like feedback in my comments that like this is really resonating with people, changing people's lives. Like be being able to have like the coolest intimate conversations with some of my community is like amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, let's just, let's jump. Okay, so I have, I have so much, I mean, there's so much to unpack there. One of the things that I kind of want to get to is the way that you've actually helped educate your audience in what aspects of their job they could be bettering or different ways that they could be kind of expanding themselves and looking at all the different opportunities. In fact, you've been, you know, kind of written up in all these major publications for kind of these different kind of just learnings and like value that you're bringing to people. And one in particular that I really want you to go into is quiet quitting. And I'm sure everyone asks you this, and I really want you to break this down because I feel like this is this is a very trendy buzzword topic right now, but I don't know if people necessarily really understand what it means and to the effect of what quiet quitting looks like. Yes, so I think obviously the, the word gets a bad rep because there's kind of like these stuffy execs or, or whatever, these like fear mongering like news articles that will kind of create this story around it. But what mm -hmm. quiet quitting really means is something that I think millennials paved the way for that Gen Z is really doubling down on. And that is understanding your job responsibilities or your job responsibilities. It's not quiet quitting is not like not doing your work and being an asshole. Can I curse? Of course you can. <laughs> is that okay? Okay, cool. Yeah. I was like, sorry. <laughs> um, but like, it's not about, I just got to clear it sometimes. Um, but like, it's just like not, it's just not like being an asshole at work. Like, it's like, it, like you're still there, right? You're doing your job, but it's like this whole thing of like, do this extra thing for a learning opportunity. And then like, you don't get even like a raise after a year because like cost of living is so insane. So it's like, I'm just trying to like teach the like awareness of that point. What you yeah. want to do with that is obviously up to you. Like I said, I'm a projector. Like I can only guide you like to your own success. I don't know what that looks like. So for me, understanding this knowledge, it was 
finding like a life outside of work. It was um, creating a TikTok following. It was starting a business. It was like getting sober and like all these other cool things that I was doing outside of this to like really transform myself. So it's like, I don't know, you know, so it's like, I don't know what it's going to look like for you. Like what I say to my followers a lot sometimes is like, it could be like starting a family and like being really a badass mom, like whatever it is. I just know that women aren't here to live paycheck to paycheck kind of hating their boss or feeling like they're not in an empowered state with their boss, that they never understand that they don't know where they're going to, going to like get into every day, stuff like that. Like, I just feel like we're here for something else and we can create it today. It's just not giving into like these really easy traps that corporate America likes to put on us. For me, like I'm really interested, obviously in a lot of realm of finance, um, but I'm really interested in like the like working part of of making money so like i really think that quiet quitting is a investment tool i think that it's a financial literacy tool it's like understanding like where your time goes and for how much money like i think that anyone no matter if you're a business owner freelancer employee like we should have a number and we should understand that especially as women especially like i tell a lot of women like pick a number and start saying it in the mirror like i don't care how uncomfortable you are like it's that's the number right Mm -hmm. and like we have to honor that And so that's, like, really what I'm trying to show with people is, like, quiet quitting is really just, like, this more advanced realm of work-life balance. Like, I think we saw Mm. employers – I started to see this, like, in 2015, 20 – yeah, probably around then, like, allowing us to, like, come in at 10 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. because we have a dentist appointment. And I'm like, that's just so that you don't take a full PTO day so that you can go back into the office and, like, work. Like, that's not actually work-life balance. Like, work-life balance, like, comes from within. And, like, however you want to, like, define that – it's fine. I just want to be that like awakening thing for you. Sure. sure. So my next question for you kind of looks like in this sense, because I think that, I think this is a really great topic. And I think that again, work-life balance has been thrown around so much and people assume that there's this very like specific system of what work like work-life balance should look like. And I think that what you're touching on is very important is that it looks different for everyone. If you were to give someone advice that maybe is like, Hey, I'm burned out. I don't really know what my work-life balance is. You know, Gab, where do I start? How do I even evaluate what these feelings are? How do I even evaluate a place to start looking at? What is my number and things like that? Where would you guide them or what piece of advice would you give them? I think that's the time to go like radically within. I think that's also a time to get a little bit more selfish, especially for women. And I don't mean that selfish is in like a bad thing. I just mean putting ourselves first a little bit more. And I, I, I typically have like an 80% female falling for this because I do preach about that a lot. It's like, there's, we're so we're, we're people of service as women and stuff like that. And like, it's so beautiful to see, but I think that, um, corporate America likes to play with that and it, you know, we'll put other people's needs above our own and stuff like that. And so it really, that's the part that comes from within. And that's where I think a little bit of like coaching style of my content will like come in to play with that stuff. It's really important. And I also think like knowledge and awareness is also super important. So like, I always say like stay super discerning in the workplace. So like start to try to figure out what you do and you don't like. Like, is it your coworkers who keep asking you for updates every two hours, even though like nothing's changed and you feel like they're probably trying to like monitor like what you're doing and like, how does that make you feel? Like just start to get like super observant about like what's going on in the day to day, what you like, what you don't like. After you have a good grip on that, then that's time to like actually make some moves. Cause if we make some moves before, I think we do this kind of self-awareness check, we're just going to go into the next, the same situation. Um, I did that and it was like, not awesome. So, you know, it's like, it's like staying super clear and discerning to what you want. I think the cool thing and what I was kind of saying earlier with like remote working and everything that started with the pandemic and closing and stuff like that is I think we have more freedom as an employee to at least ask for the things that we want, like the soft skills that we want in a workplace, um, the working hours that we want. I think that we have more room to bargain those things than we did like ever before. And it's so crazy too, because I'm like an old Gen Z. So like I'm on the cusp. So I like went into the office for almost a year before everything shut down. So like everyone, everyone born after me never saw that. So they just see this like remote first, like working force, which is crazy. They don't know what it's like to go into the office. So I'll say a lot of my content too. Like going into the office was like, as an employee was like sitting there, you probably had like four to six hours of real work, but then you would like fill in all this extra time to like 
do stuff or like look busy or that's where the corporate politics would come in like you'd create relationships with everyone and I'm like it's just wild like it's and I tell people that and they just think it's like so crazy but it's like now we have a little bit more power with the remote working I think people have like woken up to this idea of like why are we at work for eight hours if it's not needed right like granted obviously I come from a tech company perspective Mm -hmm. um I can't speak for like other industries of course yeah, I, I, I love that you're also kind of touching on, you touch on so many topics within your content, right? And I love the coachability because I think that it also, it is that awareness factor. It is kind of that wake up factor, right? And I think that you're offering so much value in just creating that kind of little nugget that goes into people's brains, especially women of what am I doing and why am I doing it? And I also want to ask you kind of, cause one of your biggest kind of pillars of your content is leveraging technology, is leveraging the tools that are available for your aid, right? Whether it's AI, whether it's all these different platforms that you use. And you even came up with kind of this really incredible program, which is the, um, excuse me, I wanna make sure I'm like referencing the, the actual correct term, the lazy girl job program. So can we talk about technology in your job and how you can kind of use it to your advantage? Yeah, for sure. I, it's, it's such a wild concept because obviously like there's a lot of jobs being lost to AI. So I don't want to like skim over that. Obviously that's a thing. Um, but the cool thing is, is we have chat GPT and like all these really free AI tools or almost free tools to like help us streamline every process. Mm -hmm. So what I really kept seeing is like the the previous question that you just asked me where people are like i'm really frustrated i don't know what to do i have zero capacity to look for another job like if that is the answer right like if you tell yeah. me like i'm in a toxic workplace like don't even like i had some people be like don't even tell me because then that's going to add like a whole another thing that i'm going to have to like worry about and i'm like it was like the first week of this year it was like New years and i was like how like how can i like show people at scale how to get out of a job with ai and mm -hmm. then that's where this was really born. So mm -hmm. it's a streamlined process to really show like how to use ChatGPT to evaluate like every step of the interview process. So obviously you can tailor a resume, you can tailor cover letters, um, yeah. but it streamlines even through like interview prep and all these different tools where you can use AI to actually like practice for interviews. You can wow. evaluate um, a salary and understand like if that's like on par for you right now. Um, there's also like beyond just like the prompting with chat GPT, there's a full knowledge hub that I update all the time. So it's able to actually like update in real time. So if there's stuff where I'm like, oh yeah, like this thing also too, like I can actually like update that in, which is super awesome. Um, and then there's a lot of like more of like the within stuff that we were kind of talking about earlier. Like there's a little bit more prompting of like, who mm. are you? Like, what do you want? And like being able to like actually guide you through that. Um, not too long ago, and I mean, they're, they're still a thing, but not too long ago, I paid for two resumes for like $400 to be written, and it was just two resumes, not even like tailored to anything. So it's like, I'm, I'm just trying to give something that's like a process that you can repeat over and over and over and over again, like for yourself. And then there's also cool stuff too, because then you're able to actually like organize everything because there's like a full like front end part of it that's like notion based right now. So like, it's got all the organization where you can put all of your resumes, a job tracker that tracks like every job, in, uh, job interview status and stuff like that so it's super exciting um and yeah I'm really excited and then like I'm launching version two which of course like every version one person will have access to this but it's going to be um a partnership with a company called Sprintfolio they do um they facilitate creating portfolios for UI and UX um graduates or interested people or whatever stage they're at in their learning and so we're going to do a sprint on the Lazy Girl Job Program and like hopefully get it like web based. So it's going to be exciting. Oh my gosh, that is so exciting. I love that you're creating yeah. all these tools that are so accessible, but also so valuable, right? Like I, I mean, again, like when I came out of college, I remember trying to write my resume and like the way that I would go about it was like you'd pull like your five best friends resumes and like try to like put together what you think people would want to yeah. see. And it's so hard and so complicated. And even like what you're doing with like the salaries and like looking at the job and like the specifics of like, is this what I want to be doing? And is the, is this pay amount kind of what I should be making for what I'm doing? And I feel like there's, you're kind of, you're kind of exposing a lot of like the unknown of approaching and going into the workforce for those that are like, 
what, where do I even look to like to, to kind of like fact check if what I'm going after is even right or is even right for me? Yes. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, and I think, I, yes, that's a really good call out too, because I think, um, I noticed that there's not a lot of co-collaboration, especially in women in corporate America, unfortunately. And like, that was so important for me. Like I wanted to know like what my female colleagues were making, what my male colleagues were making. Like that was so important to me. So I really created those relationships, but it's like, we don't ha like, not everyone has that, especially with this like whole remote team stuff. So that's where like, I thought adding like salary negotiation tips where you could like prompt with chat GPT and like practice salary negotiation. I thought like being able to research and stuff like that would be so helpful for the people who like don't have that type of like reference um, in their life. Cause it's so like wildly important. Like I was just um, doing Celestial's podcast actually yesterday with Laura Fortley and she did this um, exercise one time where they had everyone, it was just like a women's event. I, I don't remember what it was, but they had every woman say what they were making. And she oh. said it was like the most profound experience ever. And I was like, like, how can I do that with AI? Probably not, but. <laughs> that, I mean, I feel like too, let's, I mean, like, let's also just call this out. There's such a stigma around talking about how much you make. Like it, there's such like yeah. a, like a, like it's scary, you know? It, it, and I think there's also this fear from both, set, both ends of, am I making enough? Am I undervaluing myself or is someone making more than me? And how, you know, am I not good enough to be making as much as they are? And so I think that, again, like kind of, you know, kind of lifting up the rug and showing everything that's underneath and actually showing what's out there is really, like you said, profound for so many women. I think, again, as women, I hate to like general, I hate to like generalize, like, honestly, our gender for, for this, for the specific standpoint, but there's a big, there's a big sensitivity to our own value and our own worth. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's something that I feel like women experience more than men. And so there's almost this insecurity of, well, am I good enough? Do I deserve to be making that much? You know, it's a very intuitive kind of thinking. Whereas again, from what we've seen historically in the male workforce, it's more or less of, I deserve this. I'm going after this. I'm going to ask for more. It's a lot more of a, like a masculine approach. When you work with, you know, anyone in your audience or when you talk with them, what are some core themes that you see coming from women that are, what are they struggling most with when they go to approach the workforce? Saying no. Mm. Saying talk no. More on so, that? What is that yeah, absolutely. So it's like, an example question will be like, oh, my boss is asking me to work overtime. All my co colleagues work overtime, but I don't want to. What should I do? And I'm like, say no. <laughs> and like, I laugh just because it's like, it gets to be fun and it gets to be like authentic. Um, but I understand that it like the situation that they're in, because I used to people please so hard before my concussion in my first job and stuff. Like I saw it and I know what place she's coming from. Like she... Yeah, it's a lot. Like, she doesn't know yet what she's worth and what she can create. And so what we what we can do in the meantime, if we don't know that right now, is we can understand what we don't want. So we can say no to things, which will then eventually guide us to the things that we want. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, like, a huge one, though. Like, it's, it's always, like, a question in a different way. It'll be, like, my boss wants me to work overtime. My boss wants me to do another project. Um, I'm taking on, like, a laid-off co-worker's work right now stuff like that. But it's always like back to saying no. And so I actually just did a TikTok on this yesterday because I get like, I get asked like, what script do you have for this? And I'm like, there's no script. There's absolutely no script. It's authentically whatever you want. This whole idea that like, I see a lot of influencers and like career creators and LinkedIn influencers do this stuff and there's no hate to this, but this whole like 10 ways that you could tell your boss like this and it's like it's so employer focused i'm like if you show up authentic authentically empathetically you can do no wrong like say no say oh this is super frustrating to me that we keep having this conversation like we talk about like my actual job responsibilities and get aligned together like whatever you need to do but there's no script it's just whatever comes from within and mm -hmm. i think that the corporate jargon was great but i think that it allows people to kind of hide behind stuff or like silence ourselves and um yeah i feel like i feel like that's so true but i also see the other side of this 
you know, I mean, even my, even myself, it's funny because I'm, I'm still working through so much of my people pleasing mentality, especially owning Same. an agency. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it's never done. Right. We just continue to work on it and continue to basically practice it. When you talk about not having a script, I feel like the script is kind of like the crutch, right? It's kind of like the, yes. it's kind of like the, I, I get to hide behind it because these are the words that I'm going to say. And I think this is going to work, but you're right. It does hold back a little piece of authenticity of who you are. When you work with women to look internally at how they can show up most authentically. And I know we talk a lot about kind of looking radically within and talking about really kind of expanding who you are. What is the, where's the first step to guiding them to go within, right? Like, what does that look like to understand what your authentic voice is for those that maybe haven't done the work or those that maybe haven't gone through any mindset training or even understand like what the quote unquote work looks like. It stems from the decentering the nine to five from your identity. So that's a huge part of quiet quitting and actually like what the term anti-work in my brand anti-work girl boss stands for. So it's, that's kind of what I was getting to earlier is like millennials paved this way of like, Hey, we saw our baby boomer parents like, almost kill themselves at their jobs, you know, like go through this for like 40 plus years. And we saw this, like, I want to do stuff that's more passion filled. And then I think Gen Z really gets to roll the carpet of that, of like the nine to five is not my identity. When we like, when we, that's true, like a true work-life balance. Like when we attach our self-worth to external factors is when suffering begins. So I think that there has to be this like radical practice of of detachment from the, the end result from the nine to five as a whole. And I think that's where I, th- this empowerment can come from. Um, so that's like a huge part of like what actually happened with my concussion. Cause I started to realize like all the negative effects it was having on my body, um, going through like therapy again, because I had post concussion syndrome. So I couldn't like name sophisticated emotions anymore. I really only had like rage. I had sadness, but I couldn't really, I didn't have like an emotional spectrum again. And so I was, like, reteaching myself at 23, like, how to feel again and, like, identify and communicate emotions. And so then when I was, like, still in corporate America, I was, like, like, these two, you can't exist together. Like, this is insane. So Mm -hmm. I was, like, well, what's more important to me? And it's, like, it's me. It's, It's the ways of being that I am. It's, you know, and it's, like, being able to slowly, like, separate the two of, like, they're not, they're kind of a Venn diagram, right? Like, you and the nine to five, like, absolutely. Like, work can, gets to be fulfilling, absolutely. But it's not... It's not you and any conversation, whether it be poor or not with like a manager that you're afraid of, whatever the result is, it's not who you are, right? Like it's, it's just part of this, this whole journey that we're on together. So yeah, that's really like what I talk about with this. Um, I, it gets, it starts to get like super wild and spiritual. I don't get to like say, I appreciate this actually. Cause I don't get to like say this stuff in short form. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, what's funny is the more, the longer and longer I'm in business and it's, you know, I I've shared about my boyfriend on the podcast a couple of times, but he's, he's like in his like first year and a half of entrepreneurship. And the more and more time I spend in business, the more and more I realize how spiritual it is. And I used to think that business was so professionally driven and quite honestly, the more and more again, time I spend in different businesses and just doing the work, I realized how much of a personal development mission it actually is and how it really does come back to our spirit and our soul, which is Mm -hmm. so not what we've been trained to think professionally. And quite honestly, I think that the level of different levels of success are really just different unlockings of who you are internally and how you're able to like move through them. So I I am here with you on the spiritual path. And honestly, I get more people thinking that I'm absolutely psycho for thinking that it's so divinely led, but honestly it, it is. (laughs) Okay. So Gabs, what is on, what's on your radar now? What's on, what is the few, you know, what, what direction are you taking this thing? What, what is, what is the next steps look like for anti-work girl boss or just even for you? Well, I just learned at 3 a.m. last night that my lazy girl job like term that I really tried to brand with my program is going viral on TikTok. So that's what I've been doing the last like six hours. Um, So yeah, yeah, I realized that. So that's been super exciting. So I'm trying to like brand this word lazy. Well, I am, I guess, obviously now Um, lazy girl jobs. And so it's this idea of like safe, equitable, remote 
um, mm. friendly job. So it's like you have the capacity to have some type of work life balance and then go figure everything else out. Um, cause it's back to the whole thing of like your job's not there to like emotionally fill your cup. Like you go do that and then you do the job. It's like the other way around. And so like, that's what I'm trying to teach women is like, Hey, like not everyone needs to be this like business mania. Like I'm not telling everyone to like go quit their jobs and like go be a content creator. Like it's probably one of the hardest jobs ever. <laughs> Entrepreneurship as a whole, it's just crazy. Like I'm not saying like, that's the only way. Of course, obviously that's what I did with this awakening, but what you could do is whatever. So it's like whatever you want. So it's like, that's, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to show with people is like lazy girl jobs are cool because it allows you to do whatever the heck you want outside of this. I'm really trying to like train that mentality. Um, so I've been working on that. Um, the second thing I'm trying to think of like other extra exciting stuff. I think I talked about it, like how we're doing a lot of advancements with the lazy girl job pro program as a whole. We're on like version 1.3. I like to call it. It's still a, a version one though. Um, so I really see something more for it. I use a lot of like low code, no code tools. Um, but I don't think it makes it, makes it as accessible as like doing something web-based or something like that. So making a lot of UI changes and enhancements to that to really, really, really like create this mass adoption in women. Um, also anti-work girl boss is launching a scholarship this week for college students. So wow. I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah. I could like. I haven't like fully celebrated it yet, um, but I need to this weekend. But like, if you told me in college, whatever, like eight years ago when I started college, like that I was doing this, I would have been like, no freaking way. Like I was so broke. I was working so hard. I was such a party girl. Cause I was like, f like so afraid of my emotions. I was so angry at stuff going on in my life. Like, I mm -hmm. like, I would be like, absolutely not. So it's just so cool to like be able to like create this. So I'm super excited about that. That will go live, I believe, next week. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you are just doing so so many incredible things. I, like, Justin just, again, it feels so aligned and it feels so true to you, even hearing you speak to it. But also the way that you've just been so quickly able to reach the masses and also to how your audience has taken so they've just been taken by you. I mean, I feel like I've been taken by you since I, I, I think I even stumbled upon you before I knew you were involved with Celestial and just some of our own like inner circle of friends. But I, 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 I love what you're doing. I think that it's so impactful and so beautiful. And I, I always end this, this podcast with this last question. I'm really excited to hear your answer on it. So the question is, what does influence mean to you? Hmm. Influence, it, it changes every day, probably my definition, but I would say right now in this moment, 26, 26 year old Gab believes it's the ability to be authentic and still bring everyone around, along with you. Like it's the ability to be big, play big, and also bring everyone else along with you. Like I, it, it's like opening up the hood of my actions and really not trying to gatekeep anything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, obviously like the commercial aspect of influencing is like driving a sale. Great. That's awesome too. But it's like, I want to show my people like w how my brain works and everything that I can do at scale for them to try to create some type of, like I was saying earlier, like an awakening or, um, a massive change in, uh, how they view their happiness and their freedom as a whole. Like I want them to experience that back. And so any way that I can like vulnerably share who I am at the most authentic level to create that with someone that's influenced me. Like I did a good job. Well said and beautifully said. Yeah. I'm happy okay. that day. Gabs, where can everyone find you? I I'm so excited. We also, you guys, we have a really special offer for you guys today, which is so exciting. We're actually going to be offering 20% off the lazy girl job program. We're going to link it in the show notes, which is so fucking cool. And I'm excited to play around with it. I'm going to use my own code and really explore what this looks like because I'm trying to always, always do all the things. But where can everyone find you? How can they work with you? What are, I mean, you have all these different amazing offerings. So just tell us where, where we can find you. So I am Gabrielle underscore judge on TikTok. Come hang out with us. We just hit 100K followers this week. So it's been super exciting. Um, and it's been a lot of fun over there to see all the new faces. So I'd love to kind of see in the comments and see what's going on. Um, and on Instagram, I'm anti-work girl boss. 
Um, and so from there, we have our link tree in bio. Um, and so you can really just see everything that we're up to. There's also a way that you can um, ask me legit anything at all times. That's also in the bio. Um, and you get one free question a month. Oh my gosh, amazing. Well, Gabs, I, I hope it's okay. I keep calling you Gabs, but it's, I just love this yeah. nickname for you. So I'm going to adopt it now. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. It. And thank you so much for just sharing your truth and your power. It's been really awesome. And quite honestly, I don't think I've ever had someone on the show that just speaks to what you're speaking to, to change for women, to change the workforce and just really approaching it from such an authentic position. Thanks, Whitney. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed the the format of this one. Thank you for allowing me to like go past just like the, the 90 second TikTok format and being able to like flow through stuff. So thank you. Always. Well, thanks for going under the influence with us.